Mr. X to read all about it. We're going to take a short break from our Transformation Nation segments to bring you breaking news on cancer prevention. Melanoma, the most deadly form of skin cancer, has been shown to be reduced by 40%. And it's not from a drug or slathering yourself in sunblock. It's from taking an essential vitamin and sun exposure. This new study supports what we've been saying all along. Micronutrient deficiency is the most widespread and dangerous health condition of the 21st century. And this pandemic of micronutrient deficiency is the cause of today's most debilitating diseases, including osteoporosis, obesity, hypertension, heart disease, and cancer. In fact, according to the USDA, 9 out of 10 Americans are deficient in their essential micronutrients. This means that there's a good chance that you are deficient in your disease preventing micronutrients. It is our belief that by increasing our micronutrient intake and becoming sufficient in our essential vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids, we can protect ourselves from today's most devastating health conditions and diseases and usher in an age of optimal health. Now we're going to shine a light on this incredible new study that shows us just how powerful micronutrients really are. The study, published in the Journal of Investigative Dermatology, proved that vitamin A prevents melanoma. But before we share with you the fantastic results of this new study, here are a few ugly facts about melanoma. Skin cancer is the most common type of cancer among white populations worldwide. Most skin cancers are easy to treat and pose only a small threat to life, but melanoma is difficult to treat unless detected early. One in 50 Americans will have a lifetime risk of developing melanoma. According to the World Health Organization, there are 160,000 new cases of melanoma each year, resulting in about 48,000 deaths annually. We now know that this is preventable. Let's start by examining what this new study found. Dermatologist Dr. Miriam Ascari and colleagues analyzed the disease risk in nearly 70,000 men and women over a six-year period who consumed vitamin A through either dietary or supplementary methods. Are you ready for this? Those who supplemented with vitamin A regularly were found to be 40% less likely to develop skin cancer. Participants on the highest dose of more than 1,200 micrograms of vitamin A a day reduced their odds by 26%. Well, that's great news. If you work out the math, you'll find that 64,000 people could be spared having to deal with this deadly cancer through the supplementation of vitamin A. The news media has really picked up on these findings and is spreading the study's message of hope for the prevention of melanoma. However, while researching this fantastic new study, we discovered yet again that there are hidden dangers, false facts, and some misinformation being spread in the media. Here we go again. The cult nutrition investigation team has arrived at the scene of the crime. But before we can throw the book at any particular culprit, we have to gather the evidence and make a case. Let's call it the case of media misinformation. Fact one. Upon closer examination, we identified numerous culprits who have misinterpreted the findings of this study. Some people <coughs> have reported larger numbers, supplying the public with some bad information. They reported a 60% reduction in melanoma from vitamin A supplementation when the study itself only revealed a 40% reduction. The numbers are still impressive, but the media's ability to report it is less so. Fact two. Some reporters suggested that based on this study, the American public should eat more carrots or sweet potatoes rather than take supplements in order to increase their intake of vitamin A. The problem with this is twofold. First off, the study specifically stated that the intake of A through food alone did not reduce cancer risk. Only those taking supplements saw the benefits. So either they didn't read past the abstract at the beginning of the study, or someone in the press is a representative for the care growers of America. Additionally, it looks like the reporters have fingered the wrong guy for this one. You see, carrots contain something called beta carotene, AKA provitamin A. It's a precursor or inactive form of vitamin A found in plants and some dairy. The man, or in this case, the woman for the job, is preformed vitamin A, AKA retinol. It's fat soluble and only found in animal sources. For the body to use beta carotene, it has to convert it into retinol, and it's not so good at this conversion. In fact, according to researchers at Johns Hopkins, it's likely that beta carotene converts to retinol at a rate of 21 to one. And we ain't talking blackjack. You're not winning anything with those odds. So while a large carrot contains 1,840 micrograms of beta carotene, after this conversion, you're only getting 85 little micrograms of retinol. According to the Weston A. Price Foundation, many individuals have conditions that make the conversion of beta carotene even more difficult. Infants can't convert beta carotene at all, while diabetics and those suffering from these other conditions convert very poorly. Better animal sources of retinol that would not require conversion would be egg yolks, liver, or cod liver oil. But even then, you'd have to eat nearly a dozen egg yolks to reach this goal. 
Individuals following a paleo, primal, or ancestral diets might have a greater likelihood of reaching vitamin A sufficiency from food alone, but only liver lovers need apply. While here at Cult Nutrition, we believe in a food-first philosophy to optimal health, it's important to reiterate that according to the study, diet alone did not produce the 40% reduction in melanoma. Additionally, only supplements containing retinol worked, not beta-carotene. We should mention, however, that some media did report on how much vitamin A supplement to take in order to achieve the greatest cancer-preventing benefit. But here again, they got their entire message wrong, and this time, messing up the facts could be deadly. Fact 3. You can see here the direct quote from the Huffington Post UK, where it clearly states that a dose of more than 1,200 milligrams increased the prevention against the cancer by 74%. What the study really said is that a dose of more than 1,200 micrograms increased the prevention of melanoma by 26%. Did you see the mistakes in their reporting? Not only did they overstate the percentages as we stated earlier, but they indicated the higher the dose, the better the result. This just isn't true. Simply taking a vitamin A supplement showed better results than high dose supplementation. To make matters worse, the dose they mentioned was 1,200 milligrams. The actual dose was 1,000 times less, or 1,200 micrograms. That little letter C in there makes a big difference. 1,200 milligrams is a dose that could kill you. This is 400 times more than the Institute of Medicine has set for tolerable upper level of intake. However, the 1,200 micrograms that was used in this study equates to 4,000 IU, well below the safe reference daily intake, or RDI, of vitamin A, which is 5,000. Well, that's it. With these three facts, the case of media misinformation is solved. So here's the take-home message. First, supplements are not the bad guy many make them out to be. As this study shows, they can have a very real and beneficial place in a disease prevention lifestyle that includes a micronutrient-rich diet, healthy lifestyle habits, and a properly formulated multivitamin, in that order. Second, make sure to have both forms of vitamin A, retinol and beta-carotene, in the supplement you choose. But remember, toxicity is a very real thing and too much of a good thing can turn bad. That's why in our book, Naked Calories, we only recommend taking a daily multivitamin that contains approximately 100% of the RDI for each micronutrient. Lastly, here's a couple more facts about the melanoma study we thought you might find interesting. It was women who were most protected by the vitamin A supplementation. The finer sex actually increased the prevention of melanoma by 73%. Men only saw a 17% increase in protection. In the end, they averaged it at 40%. Also, sunlight exposure was shown as a positive factor for this protection, exactly the opposite of what you might expect. In the end, this study is great news, media misinformation or not. This is just another example of how our message of micronutrient sufficiency can protect you or someone you love from a deadly disease. To learn more, pick up a copy of Naked Calories and buckle up, because we're in hot pursuit of micronutrient sufficiency and optimal health.